All right, welcome everybody. We are, um, this is likely part one of two or one of three on the expired film uh, shows here. We are, uh, I'm just super excited to get this stuff back, so I wanted to get it out to you guys. Um, this is some old Kodak. I put 5247 because that's what we suspected it was. It doesn't actually have a 52 code um, associated with it. It's either predating EXR or it's EXR before, you know, in some weird packaging that they didn't put EXR on it, but it is a 100 speed tungsten film. And essentially what I did was I took, uh, I just spooled some up into a 35 millimeter canister to shoot in my still camera. And I sent it to qwdlab.com. Uh, those guys are amazing. They're actually processing stills in ECN2 chemistry. Um, I've done a ton of C41 cross process and it just doesn't, um, it just doesn't show you what you're actually going to get if you were to shoot this and send it to a motion picture lab. So to start off, um, I essentially shot the 100 speed from 100 all the way to 12 ASA. Uh, so 100 would be box speed, 50 would be opening up a stop, 25 would be opening up two and 12 would be opening up three stops. So if you do the one stop per decade rule, uh, this falls in that three to four stop range. So I believe I actually did a six ASA. Um, I'll have to find that. But uh, first of all, just having a look at this, uh, this is box speed. So this is shooting this film from the 80s at 100 ASA. And you can see the, the shadows are very like, red and uh, are very grainy uh, still kind of a cool looking image if you wanted to shoot something like this it's totally acceptable in my opinion um, I did a Macbeth card for every single one so you can really kind of tell where the color shift is although the white I mean the colors look good um, it's the blacks that have kind of gone away which means it, it's underexposed um, <clears throat> so my wife was reluctant to come out and, and help me out but she did so that's the face um, next we're going to 50 ASA, which is opening up one stop and already you're seeing some of the, uh, color come back in the shadows where it's, it's a little bit more true, a little bit more black, far less grain. The grain structures is a lot tighter. Um, same thing here with the Macbeth card. You can really start to see the blacks, um, coming back and the grain is, is super acceptable. I mean, I, I, I would shoot the film at this speed, uh, no doubt, depending on what you're going for. Um, and again, skin tone looks great for 30 some odd year old film. The skin tones are really, really nice. Um, and now we're getting to kind of the sweet spot. So this is two stops opened up at 25 ASA. The blacks are really cleaning up. The, the grain is, is, going away. I mean, it's, it's a hundred speed film, so it should have pretty tight grain overall. Um, but this is really starting to, to look acceptable to shoot and then to be able to kind of do whatever you want with in post. Um, that's the goal is if you underexpose film too much, you're not going to be, your colorist isn't going to be able to deal with it like he or she would like to. Um, so again, the Macbeth card, the colors are great. Uh, they may even be getting a little bit, um, a little bit nicer as we open up. So again, this is two stops opened. Um, skin tones are really lovely. The detail in this shot is amazing. Um, it's just amazing how, how well this film is held up and you can see here in the shadows and, uh, it really, really looks nice. Um, <clears throat> now we get to 12 ASA. So this is three stops and you know, I, I would, I'd like to think that this is probably, what the stock looked like if you bought it new off the shelf in the 80s that when you shot it at box speed this is likely what you got um it's very very clean very sharp grain is you know kind of non-existent um at this point <laughs> opened up so uh let's have a look at the macbeth card same thing i mean it, it's really really clean this film has held up really well over the years um it was stored Stored properly, obviously, um, but like here you can tell like the, the blacks are like, they're just really, really super clean. The grain is really tight. The skin tones are great. I think I took a couple other shots just of my setup um, at 12 ASA in the evening with no direct sunlight. You're looking at a, 
uh, you know, 60th of a, of a second shutter at a one four. Um, so, you know, not a whole lot of sensitivity there. So essentially over, over time, film gets less sensitive. Um, so like I said, if you have some film from the nineties or from the eighties, uh, obviously this is a great way. If you've got 35 millimeter, this is an absolutely fantastic way to find out if your film is shootable at all. I mean, I, I called a lab that I use regularly and they said, throw it away. You know, it's not going to be any good. We'll do a, a density test on it and, and it'll tell us that it's junk. And so of course I'm not going to throw away 3000 feet of hundred speed film uh, that was given to me, uh, kindly by someone that found me on Vimeo. But essentially if you snip some of this off, uh, transfer it into a cartridge, uh, send it off to QWD or someone that does ECN2, which is, I mean, not very many people do ECN, true ECN2 chemistry for small batch. Um, QWDlab.com, they, they're one of the only people doing it out there. And when I got my scans back, I was just blown away. Um, like I said, I've been uh, cross-processing and maybe I can pull some of this cross-process stuff up. Um, let's see. Because it just does not hold up like the C41 does. Let's see. So, and it could be my scanner too. I'm not really sure how they're scanning at QWD, but um, this is a uh, uh, this is a test I shot in my backyard with some 250D uh, 5246. I think it, the date on it is like mid 90s, 95, something like that. Um, but just the C41 process overall, I think, adds a lot of contrast. You don't get that flat, um, that flat process that you would you would get with an ECN film. Um, but as you can see, this stuff is totally acceptable to shoot as well. This is, I've got probably eight thousand feet of this stock. But again, this was cross process, so I took the rimjet back off with just a baking soda and water mix. Um, before I went into the developer and you know, it turned out pretty good. The color shift is kind of weird. Here's like, this is really green. Um, and then you get like this, I just went back to the wrong folder. Um, you get this really green tone and then you'll get this really warm tone and then you get a really cool tone and I'm using silver fast, uh, scanning software which is going to try and correct it a certain way. Um, I know you can do HDR scanning, but I haven't quite figured all of that out yet. <clears throat> Just to say, this is cross-processed. It, it gives me a pretty good idea what I would rate the stock at, but there's nothing like having, uh, you know, having the film processed in its, you know, in the chemistry that it was meant to be processed in. So, um, Overall, you know, you can tell just a quick, this is 100 speed uh, at 100 ASA, and here's your three stops open, how clean that is. So, hope you enjoyed this, hope you learned a little something. We, we have a, an entire um, episode coming out where I've shot 16 millimeter film the same way. I'm waiting on the scans to come back. Um, and as soon as we get that, we'll dive a little bit deeper. I mean, it's the same basic theory, one stop per decade. Um, but we'll jump into that and you'll get to see some moving images. I did some old, uh, uh positive film. So, uh, I've got some reversal that I did that probably didn't hold up very well, but we're going to see. Um, and then I did some old negative stock as well. And, uh, we hope to see you really soon. Thanks. Bye.